I'm going to go over this video where I will show you how to build a simple game or application using AI or just ChatGPT or any LLM. And we're going to make it dynamic, so not just a static game using a Google Sheets database. And you don't need any experience for this. It's great for hackathons if you don't have much time and for beginners who want to build something really cool. So we're going to talk briefly about you know, whether you want to choose to build a, a website or a mobile app. Um, the thing with mobile apps is that it's hard to access a mobile app without having a an account. So if you want to build a an iPhone app, especially, and if you want to distribute it for other people to be able to see, a lot of times, unless it's very complicated, you need to have an Apple developer account, which you need to pay for like $99 or you have to like hook up their computers, your computer to their phone in order to be able to install. So it's not very easy to distribute. So I highly recommend, you know, just making a website. It's, uh, usually it usually suffices for most applications out there. And then you can just, you know, make it look pretty on, an, on a mobile device. Um, I've done a lot of hackathons at one a ton. Most of the times we do not build mobile apps. We, you know, one time when we did, we did not really build an, a mobile app. We made a web page that looked really good on a, on a mobile app. <clears throat> and then there's the other thing of using, you know, different um, tools like Replit or CodePen, like which what to use. So um, th there's a tool called Replit, which allows you to, it's, it's kind of, it has AI integrated within their platform, which is cool. But the thing with that is, uh, it makes it more complicated, you know, for example, I want to make a simple game, but it used Python and installed a bunch of things. And now the game's on their server. I can't really just download it and it'll just work. It's, you know, a little setup required. Um, I definitely can't just, you know, deploy it as a static view. They do allow you to look at your page. So they give you a URL in order to be able to review whatever you built. Um, Overall, I think it's it's good, but uh, not something that I recommend or that I do personally. It's great if you want to be able to scale easily, though, uh, because it can it knows all of your files and everything, and you know does some cool stuff. I, on the other hand, recommend something called CodePen. It has a really really good free version, so you just go to CodePen.io. <clears throat> as soon as you go to CodePen and you create an, a free account. Um, It'll go to this page where you can, you know, say new pen and it'll, you know, go to a blank page. I'm, I'm just going to go briefly over some of the basics of websites. So in a, in a pen, there's HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, which is like the basics of a website. HTML contains all the text. So H1 stands for like a header. This is the closing and opening tag. P stands for paragraph. So, you know, the text inside it, and button is just a button. And then CSS, like I mentioned, is, is the styling. So, you know, the font style, the color, the sizes, everything happens over here. So if you remove this, there'll be no styling. It'll just be like essentially text. See, I'm just gonna keep it back. Um, and then JavaScript is essentially the brains of your code. Over here, as you can see, it says, okay, you know, as soon as a button is clicked, <clears throat> take that paragraph tag item set the opacity to zero, which basically means you're hiding it. So if I tap on this button, it hides that, <coughs> the text over there. Uh, the other th neat thing over here is that you can include external libraries. So this one includes something called jQuery, which makes it very easy to handle stuff. Um, that's the basics. You can make it a little smarter. So you can use something called an API. So instead, API is basically the, the bread and butter of the entire internet industry. You don't want people to have to worry or show them um, what you don't want them to see. So you store it behind a server and you only allow people to access a, you know, one small item out of the server. Like for example, your bank, it only should show you your bank information, not everyone's information. So a server is how you access it. So over here, what we do is we're accessing the Chuck Norris database of the internet. We're getting a random joke and we're going to show it over here. So there's two lines of code in the HTML, which is the button and the, the tag. And then <clears throat> over here, what we're doing is we're saying, okay, whenever 
the ID get quote is tapped. Call the get quotes function. The get quotes function goes to the internet, goes to this API, gets the value, stores it in A, and then it says the quote ID. Use the HTML as the joke that is returned. So this joke is returned here. As you can see, this is also just 12 lines of code. So that's how the internet works, APIs. So um, what we're going to do is we're just going to use ChatGPT, you know, an LLM to generate the um, the game for us. So this is what my prompt is. It says, "Help me create a simple numbers game for CodePen that requires solving a puzzle based on patterns, and it is time-based, and stores the amount of time it takes for you to complete that as a high score." <clears throat> and encourages you to beat that high score so people want to play it again, so kind of gamify it. <coughs> Give me the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So we have to be very specific like this. And you can change this to be a puzzle, um, uh, Flappy Birds game, anything. You can change that, but, and you can change up the prompt as well. So you know, it goes in, it gives me the entire code. I'm just going to copy that code and put it inside my code pen. So where did my code pen go? Here. And hit save. So as soon as you do that, it <coughs> it has this over here. It asks me the question. I put 15, I hit submit, it says, hey, that's your best time. You know, that's great. So this is cool. And you know, if I refresh the page and I come here, it still knows that it was three three seconds that it took me. That's because I'm using something called local storage. But if I give it to my friend, they're not, and they go to this URL, they're not gonna be able to see three seconds because <clears throat> their computer doesn't have that stored. And it's not stored anywhere that is equally accessible. So this is just a static page, it's not dynamic. It's not storing the data somewhere on the internet um, dynamically, there's no database. So we're gonna change that. You know, If you've come this far, this is great. You know, You saw how simple it was to create something like this. It's a game, it works. Uh, it doesn't maybe look the greatest, but you can, you know, use CSS to, to design it. You can copy this and say, hey, you know, enhance the CSS, use like different design patterns. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to say, we're going to use uh, Google Sheets. So Google Sheets has uh, here. So if you go to Google Sheets or Google Drive, you can create a new file, uh, you know, new Google Sheets file. You go in to the Google Sheets file, just keep it as blank, <clears throat> and uh, and you know <clears throat> from here, if you go to Tools, Extensions, hit App Script, it'll open a file like this. Within the file, <clears throat> you know it'll show up as function. You know, let me remove this. So this is what it shows as soon as you create a new file, a new App Script. So I'm going to add return 25. I'm just going to hit save. When you go in over here, if you haven't used Google Sheets before or Microsoft Excel before, there's some really cool stuff that you can do. You can say sum of two and three, and it'll give you five. You know, <clears throat> you can put two here, put three here. You can say equals sum of this, come out this, and it like gives you the answer. So it does a lot of cool stuff. But you can also do using App Script, you can do equals my function, so you can make it even smarter and it will give you whatever value you put over here. So it should show you 25. It generally shows you 25. <laughs> okay, while it's loading, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, I'm using Google Sheets App Script as my database. Give me the do get and do post. So these are keywords that are important that I should use to accept up to 10 high scores. So I don't want more than 10 high scores. The lowest time Submitted is the highest score. Also allow a user to be able to get the top 10 high scores. Along with the scores, also store or retrieve the timestamp. So when the high score was made, like a year ago, two years ago, how old is this game? <clears throat> and a three character name of the person submitting the score. Make sure that you can add two test functions that will be able to get the scores and post a sample score. So I submit that. Oh, by the way, over here, it actually did ended up showing it has 25, so just return that. So you can put in like APIs over here. You can make a Google, um, you know, 
Chuck Norris joke and it'll show you a Chuck Norris joke randomly over here. So once once I submit this, it gives me this entire app script code, you know, and it explains it. It gives me the do post do get. I copy this, go to my app script, paste, and save, and then I deploy. So after I save, I hit deploy over here, hit new de deployments, and uh, who has access, anyone, deploy, and then I get this URL that Google gives me. So essentially I deployed an API. So now we have an API that we can access data from, store data into, and it will get stored into our Google Sheet over here. So I give this URL and I, you know, I, I put that URL and I say, here is the URL. Give me a Postman example to test this out. So um, at this point, what happened in ChatGPT was like, hey, you ran out of your 4.0 uh, ChatGPT um, limit, so we're going to use the cheaper version. So I was like, oh, dang it. I had to create a new uh, chat. So I went all the way to the top. I gave that app script code again. And I was like, here's the app script code give me the Postman example. And it gave me a Postman example. It said, here's this. So what is Postman? Postman allows me to test this code out. So this is essentially your backend. It allows me to test this out. It's a free app. You can go to their website and create a free account. Uh, you don't need to do this. This is good to do. But you can you know, create an HTTP request. You know, If something doesn't work, which usually happens, you can come here and test what's going on. And within here, uh, you say get, you put in the URL, you say send. The name doesn't matter, obviously. But as soon as you send, it'll return a blank, <coughs> it'll return a blank list, which is expected because there's nothing in our database. And then you have a post, which essentially allows you to submit data into the, the leaderboard database and you say post and you can send. So over here, first of all, you just need to figure out what your body should be of the object. I go in here and I notice that the body object is contains name and time. So I'm going to make sure that it has name and time. So I can put this as anything and then time I can put as anything as well. And I hit send and then as soon as I hit send, I'll say score added successfully. Uh, and then, which is good, then I'll go here, try to get the score. <clears throat> One thing that you'll notice is that um, it you know shows up correctly, directly in here. Um, sometimes what happens is it doesn't show up. That's because it has a little header over here, and it removes the header. But over here, what it, it assumed that that 25 was the header. So if I removed everything, and I tried to do this post again, uh, you know, the score would show up all right here, but the get wouldn't work because it's expecting a header. The header, like I said, is the stuff on top, you know, uh, so I will add a header that just says name. This is, this is not necessarily needed for any purpose, but we'll just add it because that code says so. We could remove this and redeploy, but, you know, I don't want to redeploy. That's why I just added the header. Now if I do the send, I'll show up the value. Okay, so we tested it successfully using Postman. So we know our backend works. So if you know the front end developer says, oh my god, what the back end is messed up, you can just be like, here's Postman, it works. Okay, so that is fine. Now what I did over here is I said, use this, so use that Postman stuff within the code pin numbers game. So I pasted that code again. And I said, retrieve a global leaderboard of high scores and provide me the updated code pen. Also add a little high score table below the game for people to be able to see and make sure to ask the user for their name so that they can also submit the high score with their, with their score, their name with their score. So I gave them the older code that was on another chat and now it you know updated that <clears throat> and gave it to me. So I'm gonna copy that, go in here, paste and hit save. And now it immediately has, a, you know, the global leaderboard now. It contains that score that we submitted from there. And I'm going to try to submit, say eight, 
So if I score, it asks me my name, and it did not submit it. So I'm going to uh, in try to inspect to see what's wrong with it. In order to be able to inspect, you just right click and say inspect. Sometimes it won't show up on your computer. For that, you just have to go to your settings, go to advanced, check this box that says show features for web developers, and then it'll show up. Now, within your network, you'll see it's empty. Uh, you might have to go to XHR, but I'm going to try to hit submit again. And now what it does is it shows me this red error and it gives me the error message. It says pre-flight response is not successful, status code 405. And so what I do is I just, you know, tell ChatGPT, I'm like, hey, thank you for everything, but I'm able to get scores, but I'm not able to submit because of this error. And it tells me that this is a cross-origin resource sharing error. And so it tells me that I can make some changes to my app script code, or I can do this, or I can do that. Um, I've been doing this for a very long time, so I know that if I just um, if I just add this little thing, mode no course, within the post. So it doesn't happen in fetch, but it happens in post. So just below my headers, I put this mode no course, and I put a comma. So just this line, and I hit save. Now I refresh. Make sure the code is there. Make sure that it got saved. So it's here, line 116. I submit, put in my name, and let's see, did it? Yep, yeah, right there, 10.59. So this is the score that got submitted. So you can take this to another level. You can add more CSS. You can tell them to design, give me better design, and all that other stuff. So put a different game. Um, one way you can present it because you don't want people to see your code you can click over here to say full page that way you just shared this link and you know you can share this game people will be able to like put in their score hit submit um, and then you know it'll show up so now even if you share this link people will be able to see your score you'll be able to see their score up to 10 people so it's great as like something that you can share versus like a mobile app remember earlier um, the other thing also to note is with this, uh, when you go to your you know your code pen page, you can also at the bottom click on the export button when that shows up, and then when you export it as a zip, it'll be in your downloads folder, and you can open it, go to dist that's a distribution file, and this is the file that you would essentially put on your server. Uh, so if you if I go to one of my web pages that I manage. Of his captioning, you know, this is oh, there's a lot over here, there's a bunch of pages everywhere. And if I go to GitHub, it contains the place that I have stored the code. And if you see, there's a bunch of index pages that index HTML would just be here. If I put that in here and you went to confidencecaption.com, it would actually just show up your game. Yep, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter, LinkedIn, Samir Mansoor, um, email, or yeah. Add a comment. Thank you. I appreciate it.